Health news for you, uh, you know, here we go. As we're talking about the end of summer, it's almost time to start thinking about a flu shot. Do you get that nasal flu blast over the needle shot? No, I get you the know? needle one you every do? year. Every and year? about now, I was just, we were just talking about, yeah, usually about uh, September, I go and get mine, hmm. get the kids. Uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics just released a policy saying kids should not get the nasal spray. They should get the flu shot. And the statement supports a similar recommendation on the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that they had issued for all Americans in June. And reviews indicated that the spray had not performed well against certain strains of influenza in recent seasons. So suck it up and get the shot. Basically, is right? what they're deal saying. With, yes. Deal with a little pinch. Dr. Uh, Bill Mostow, uh, the director of the emergency department at Banner Del Webb Hospital, is here to talk about this. So shot better. Missed, not as good. Suck it up, get the shot. <laughs> it's so quick, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's over in a second. And I always bribe my kids with a sucker or something. Yeah. Like Come <laughs> on, works. you're not going to even feel it. Just close your eyes and Sucker it's done. money. Yeah, something. yeah, something. And it I works. heard that the, the flu shot this year is a pretty good one. It's matching kind of the flu that's out there. Yeah, yes, they've no? said that in the past, and who knows? Time will right. tell. But probably they have a pretty good idea of what the bugs are going to be. And so people think it's kind of early to get the shot. Remember, a few years ago, we had a huge flu outbreak in October. Yes. Mm. So um, it takes, once you get the shot, it takes about two weeks to become immune. So now is probably not a, not a bad time. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. me, as a, as a healthy adult male, would you have me get one? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, you, I mean, it's not just you, but there's the people around you. So you're a healthy, strapping young man, but let's say strapping. you Strapping, do you hear that? I know. All have right, a... we need to have uh, Dr. Uh, Mustel on more often. <laughs> So you get a little flu, right? right. No big deal. Um, but you're around babies or old people, you know, other people in the community. You might give them the flu, mm. and then they could get very, very sick. Got so it. we need herd immunity. We all have to be together yep. in this. Okay. All right. So talking about that, we got that off the list. Um, now let's talk about this whole thing with the antibacterial soaps and these ingredients that the FDA, they've been talking about this for a while, but they've banned right. quite a few of them that are used in these soaps. Yeah, so there's 19 compounds that they've banned. The two biggest are called triclosan and triclocarbon. But rather than try to have the audience memorize all the chemicals, you know, go down the list and yeah. all that stuff, the, 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 so with those chemicals in general, the problem is, number one, those in particular have been found in animal studies to maybe have caused hormone problems with the thyroid, maybe cancer, maybe not. The other problem is though, in general, these antibacterial soaps are no better than soap and water. So in terms of cleaning your hands, cleaning your hands, preventing disease, right. no better. And then the biggest problem is these antibacterial soaps, they're like little mini antibiotics. So when you use them over and over and over again, you just breed resistant bugs, stronger bugs. So you become more susceptible to getting infected by resistant bugs. And not only that, but these chemicals are now in the waterways, they're everywhere. So the whole community um, now has much stronger bugs to deal with, and they are more resistant to actually, you know, real antibiotics that we have to take. So, you know, I, so the first step is to ban these, but I think my prediction at least is that we are going to go away in general from these antibacterial soaps. And also speaking generally, you brought up an interesting point that we've gotten to the point where we keep our kids so clean all the time that it may not actually be helping them. No, there's no doubt. There's a, you know, there's a, there's a balance. So you don't want your kids to get, you know, a lot of uh, the more serious diseases. Immunizations are important. Of course. But on the other hand, it's really been shown that letting your kids roll around in the mud is probably a good idea. So you know, like when you're in a truck stop, you know, and your kid drops his candy on the bathroom floor and he picks up these. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's probably okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, good. So, you sure make me feel better about being a parent when I see my kids eating right. something that's been on the floor. So, so people who, who, who grow up in much what we call dirtier environments actually have lower incidence of allergies, of asthma. So, you know, I'm not saying... Right. But just, you know, you can relax. It's good. Yeah, Kick you the don't kids have outside to be every so over, exactly. overly yeah. uh, on them. Okay, really quick before we wrap. The, what about the hand sanitizers and the wipes? Say, does that fall into the same category of yeah, overuse? Yeah, well, those are mostly alcohol-based, okay. which is okay. So this is only about the soap. The soap. Not right, about right. the sanitizers. And it's not about chemicals found in hospitals, which is a whole different environment where we want to, you know, kill Keep as many bugs as, clean as, as possible. possible. Dr. Mostow, thank you so much. Good Welcome. information. Good information. As always. Okay. Thank you.